Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to set up your Darktable workflow to be like Lightroom. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers which I'll get into in a second and GIMP and Inkscape help articles so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com. And as I mentioned a minute ago, you could check out my GIMP Book of Layers, which you could purchase either on Amazon or get it free with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Darktable or Lightroom, both of them are raw processing software. So you basically open up your raw images into these programs. It allows you to just process or pretty much edit your photos. And the reason I'm doing this tutorial is that there are many people switching from Lightroom to Darktable for whatever reason. And I feel like the hard the part of the switch is just the fact that the two user interfaces are totally different, the two workflows are totally different. So Lightroom edits in a more linear fashion, whereas Darktable is going to use multiple tabs and many modules inside these tabs, and Darktable also has a bunch of modules that don't come in the tabs by default. So it can be a little hard to find the modules you're looking for if you're just trying to do exactly what you're used to doing inside of Lightroom. So I'll be showing you basically how to curate the different modules you want to use based on what you're used to using inside of Lightroom using Darktable's favorite section, and this is going to be really easy, you guys will see in a second. One technical thing I want to note about Darktable's modules is that they are applied in a specific order based on which modules are turned on and which modules are actually being used. So you do want to keep this in mind with this process because it may not be the exact same order that you're used to inside a Lightroom, but Darktable says that the reason they apply the modules in a certain order is that it ultimately produces the best quality final output. Or in other words, it produces the best quality final image. So I'll start with Lightroom opened up here and on the right side you can see a majority of the adjustments you can make or the edits you can make, the effects you can apply, etc. So the main thing to notice here is that you have various sections. So we have light, for example, then we have color and effects, detail, so on. And inside of each one of these sections you can click on a little button here and it'll take you to an additional effect. In this case, for example, under the light section, you have the tone curve. And in some cases, some of these adjustments also have little drop downs. And inside of these drop downs, if I can find one, uh, so right here under sharpening, there's a little drop down here. So you have additional settings inside of these drop downs. But ultimately, Lightroom works in a linear fashion and it just has sliders for every single little effect for the most part. I mean, the tone curve doesn't have sliders per se, it has that uh, tone curve graph. But basically Lightroom does just have a slider for every effect and each effect is placed in a linear fashion, it's just one after the other. The reason I keep mentioning this is that it does simplify the user interface, so it makes it a little bit easier to just go inside of here when you're editing your photos and just go through each effect and just turn the slider either to the left or the right to see if it looks better or worse. And when I come over to Darktable by contrast, here is the Darktable user interface. I'm on the color group tab here right now. So you have several tabs. So you have the show only active modules tab. This is the modules you currently have applied to your image. Then you have the favorites tab. You have the basic group here. You have the tone group, the color group as I mentioned before, and the correction group. And lastly you have the effects group. So each one of these tabs contains modules that all have to do with you know, the title of the tab here. But if you're coming over from Lightroom, this can be a little bit confusing because in some instances, not all the modules will display depending on what module setting you have. Additionally, everything might be out of order based on that linear fashion you're used to inside of Lightroom. So you kind of have to jump around and find those settings you want to use in order to have them applied in the order you want them applied. So the solution I've come up with to fix this problem is to come over here to the favorites tab and you could set up your favorites in here. And what I'm gonna to do today is just add all of the features found in Lightroom into this favorites section here. And that way you guys can just go into your favorites next time you open up Darktable and just edit all of the Lightroom settings that you're used to editing right here inside of Darktable. So the first step is you're gonna to want to come over here and click on this little hamburger icon. 
and make sure that you have subset all modules set up. When you click on this, do keep in mind that it will erase your currently set favorites. So that's why right now I have a blank slate here under my favorite section. So I'll click subset all modules. And what this will do is it'll basically display all of the modules inside each one of these tabs here. The reason you wanna do that, as I mentioned earlier, is that Darktable by default kind of leaves out some of these modules just to sort of simplify things, clean up the user interface a little bit and not throw so many effect options at people right away. Let's come back over here to Lightroom and I'm just going to go down line by line with each one of these effects. So we're starting with the light section here. The first effect is going to be exposure. So if I come over to dark table, there is an exposure effect. And so we're going to come over here to the basic group and down here, you'll see we have exposure. One quick thing I want to note is I'm not going to go through each one of these when it comes to editing the photo. I'm just showing you guys how to set up your dark table to be like Lightroom. All you have to do is come over here and under this little hamburger icon here, come down here to favorite and favorite is spelled the British way. So now we have our first module, which will be exposure. So we'll come back to Lightroom. The next option here is to adjust your contrast. And so I'll come back over here to dark table and I'll come over here back to the basic group. And the first option here is going to be contrast, brightness, saturation. So if I expand that, you'll see there's a contrast slider in here. There's also two other sliders, brightness and saturation. These are going to cover some of the other features found inside of Lightroom. So some of these modules will have multiple effects found in the Lightroom option. So in this case, once again, we'll come over and we'll add this to our favorites. So next up in Lightroom, we have highlights as one of the sliders. And then below that, we have shadows. Darktable has these two features inside of the same module once again. So what we'll do is we'll come over here to Darktable. And we'll come over here to the basic group and right below contrast, brightness, saturation is the shadows highlight slider. Here you see there are several options here. So we do have shadows and highlights. You can also adjust the white point, which as you guys know, if you watch my GIMP tutorials is basically going to add white pixels to your image, which is going to make it a little bit lighter. And you can use the radius and compress sliders here to control really the pixel area that this effect is being applied to. So this is going to be very similar to the shadows and highlights tool found in GIMP. And you can adjust the color of the shadows and the highlights, which may be affected when you make adjustments up top here. So this allows you to sort of tweak the colors from those adjustments and try to get everything looking back to normal. So I'll come over here and I'm going to click on that hamburger icon and add this to my favorites. And you'll see here that this is our first instance of Darktable assigning our modules in a particular order. So if we come back to Lightroom here, we've covered both the highlights and the shadows here with that shadows highlights section. Next up, we want to go with the whites and the blacks. And there's a few options we could use inside a Darktable. I think the best option is going to be to use the levels tool. So I'll come over here to Darktable. And now we're going to venture over here to the fourth tab, which is the tone group. And here you'll see we have the levels tool. And this basically allows you to adjust the black point here or the blacks in the image. Then you have the midtones here and then you have the whites in the image. Or in other words, the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So this is what I'm gonna use for my whites and blacks in the image. And I'm just gonna click the hamburger icon and click the favorite option. So now this has been added here inside of my favorites. And let me just collapse this here. So we'll come back over to Lightroom and the next option is going to be the tone curve here. So now we'll go back to dark table and we're going to come over here to the tone group. Right here you'll see we have the tone curve. So now I'll come over and I'm just going to add this to my favorites. Next up in Lightroom we are going to, and I'm going to scroll down here, we're getting into the color drop down here and the first option is the temperature option. And below that we have tint. The reason I mentioned both temperature and tint is that the dark table module we're gonna be using has both. So I'll come over to dark table and I'm gonna to go to the third tab here, which is the basic group and come down here to white balance. So if I expand white balance, you'll see we have tint as the first option. So temperature was actually the first option inside of Lightroom, but that's okay. So we have tint here, then we have temperature below that. So we have both of these features covered here. So I'm just going to click on this and add this to my favorites. Coming back to Lightroom, the next option is going to be the vibrance option. And there actually is a vibrance option found inside of Darktable. So it's right here under the fifth tab here, our color group tab. So we'll come down here to vibrance. And when I click on this, you'll see it does give us just a single slider here. So this one's nice and simple and I'm just going to click and add this to the favorites. 
And let me just scroll up here and I'm just gonna hide the tone curve so you guys can see the favorites we've added here. Coming back to Lightroom, the next option below Vibrance is Saturation, and you may remember that Saturation was actually part of the Contrast Brightness Saturation module that we added already. So we're gonna skip Saturation, and next up, we have this little button here next to the color title. So when I click on that, that's gonna bring up our color mixer. So the color mixer is just gonna give you several options for adjusting the hue, saturation, and luminance for each of these colors up top here. And I'll go back to red. This is actually one of my favorite tools in Lightroom when it comes to editing my images. And there is actually an equivalent tool found in Darktable and it's another one of my favorite tools inside of Darktable when editing. So I'll come over here to Darktable and I'll come over to the color group and we'll come down here to what's called color zones. So if I click to expand this, you'll see this is going to be laid out in a slightly different fashion, but it does give you a series of colors here and you can adjust the lightness, saturation, and hue. And lightness and luminance are basically the same thing. There are some slight differences between the two concepts, but in this case, when it comes to finding a replacement tool for the color mixer found inside a Lightroom, this is gonna be the closest thing and it is really close. And I actually like this tool better in some ways because you can adjust each color here by just dragging this point, for example, up or down. So in this case, we're on the lightness tab here. So this is adjusting how light that particular color is that I'm adjusting. But if there's a color that I want to adjust that's maybe slightly off of this color here, I can come down here and grab this triangle and just move it over. Well, maybe not in that case, but in this case, for example, I can drag the orange color over. So if I want a slightly different color orange, maybe I want more yellows in there, or maybe I want more pinks or reds in there, I can drag this slider over, and then I can continue to make adjustments to that color. So I'll go ahead and add this to my favorites. Next up here in Lightroom is we have our effects tab. And so the first effect under the effects tab is texture. There's not a specific texture module found in Darktable, but there are a few options for adding texture to your images. And the first is going to be equalize. So I'm gonna come over here to Darktable and we'll come over here to our correction group. And here you'll see Equalizer. So this is a tool that can be used to denoise an image and it can also be used for other things such as sharpening your image. So this is a good alternative to that texture tool. So I'm just gonna add this in here. So I'll come over and check this off in the favorites. And then next up here in Lightroom is going to be the Clarity Slider. And this is another one of Lightroom's really popular tools. Clarity is basically, if I turn this up, gonna add some detail in here. It, kind of has a sharpening effect, uh, but really its job is to bring out the detail in the edges of objects. So I guess in that sense, it is very similar to sharpening, but it does create a slightly different effect because it does sort of factor in contrast as well. So if I come back over here to Darktable, I do wanna point something out because there are two options for clarity inside a Darktable. You can use this equalizer module, which we just added. And the reason I say that is you can come over here to this hamburger icon and there is actually a clarity preset here. So when you click on that, it does add a little bit of clarity to this. And I already had this module switched on with this preset so you didn't see any change there. But this is what it looked like before and this is what it looked like after with that clarity preset. So you could just go with the equalizer tool for your clarity or you could also go with the local contrast module. So I'll come over here to our tone group and here you'll see we have the local contrast option. So this does have a detail slider here which is going to help with that clarity effect. So we're gonna come over here and just add this one to our favorites as well. And by the way, just because they're in the favorites doesn't mean they're actually switched on and being used in your image. There is, as you saw earlier, this little on and off switch. So if you wanna turn off any of these effects, you can always just click that off switch there and that'll turn it off. In this case, I do want shadows highlights, so I'll turn it on. Next up here in Lightroom is the dehaze slider. And there is a dehaze module found inside a dark table. So this one's gonna be called haze removal and it's gonna be found in the correction group here. So right here is haze removal. So we'll add this to our favorites. Coming back to Lightroom now. Next up we have vignette. So there is a vignette module inside of dark table. So I'm gonna come over here to our effects group and I'm gonna slide up here and here it is under vignetting. So here we have several settings to set up your vignette. And now I'm just gonna come over and add this to our favorites. 
Next up we have grain, and so I'll come back over to dark table, and under the effects group, it's going to have the same name here, so right here we have grain. So I'm just going to add this to our favorites. Next up in Lightroom is going to be split toning, and this one I do have to click this button here next to effects to get to. So split toning is another popular tool, and it basically adds a tint or an overlay of color to your shadows and your highlights. So basically you can have two separate tones on your shadows and highlights, and it just creates some pretty cool color effects. So if I come back over here to dark table, in my opinion, there's actually two ways of doing this inside a dark table. So the color correction tool in dark table does actually act more so like a split toning tool. And there's also an actual module called split toning. So first I'll come over here to the color group. And right here we have color correction, so I'll expand that. So the reason this basically acts like a split toning tool is you have two different settings here. This top one here is your highlights and the bottom one here, the black one is the shadows. And by moving this around here on the color correction table uh, on this little grid here, you'll see that, for example, this is going to add green to my highlights. And if I drag this to the bottom right corner, it'll add purple to my shadows. So that's basically what split toning does, especially inside of Lightroom. So this is basically acting like some split toning here. Or if I come over to the effects group here, I also have split toning. So this one is actually labeled split toning. And this gives you a little bit more customizability, but it does allow you to change the color, which is done via the hue slider and the saturation of that color for the shadows or the highlights. So let's just go ahead and add this split toning option here. So we'll come back to Lightroom, and now we're getting into the detail tab here. So we have three different sliders, and this is where we can expand the sliders here to show more options. So for sharpening, it gives us the option to also adjust the radius, the detail, and the masking. You'll remember the detail actually came into play when we were using the clarity module, more specifically the replacement for clarity, which was the local contrast module inside a dark table. So for these three settings, I'm actually just going to use one module inside of dark table, and that is gonna be found here in the correction group. So we're just going to slide up here until we get to sharpen. So the settings will be a little bit different in here, but they're basically going to accomplish the same things as what you can accomplish inside of Lightroom with sharpening. So I'll come over here and add this to my favorites. And then the next option, if you'll remember, is the masking option. So we're not actually going to add a module in our favorites for the masking option. The reason being over here on the left-hand panel is something called the Mask Manager. And this is where you're gonna handle your masks. So if you need a mask for your images, just do it over here in the Mask Manager. Coming back over to Lightroom, the next two options have to do with reducing noise. So let me just come over here. I'm going to turn off the expansion of that there. Uh, these two options can be expanded as well. I'm not really gonna get too much into these. But we have two different types of noise reduction. We have just the standard noise reduction, and then we have color noise reduction. So for the first option here, noise reduction, we're going to come over to dark table, and we'll go over to the correction group. And so there's actually three different denoise options inside a dark table. When it comes to just doing the standard denoising, we're going to come over here. And in my opinion, I think the best option is denoise profiled. So this is going to profile your image here based on the camera you used and the camera setting you used in terms of your ISO. And you guys will remember if you saw my previous tutorial on sunrise photography, whenever you set your ISO or your ISO high, it's going to add noise to your image. And that's why you wanna set it as low as possible. You wanna reduce that noise. So this option here is going to select your ISO setting or your ISO setting on your camera and perform a denoise based on that setting. So I'll add this to my favorites. And then the next option was the color noise reduction. So I'll come back over here to the correction group and I'm just going to minimize that there. And I'm gonna scroll up until we get to denoise by lateral filter. So when I expand this option, you'll see this is giving us the option to denoise based on the red, green, and blue channels here. So that's going to allow us to perform a color denoise. So I'll just add this to our favorite. 
Coming back to Lightroom, we're going to now enter the final section here, which is going to be optics. And under optics, first off, we have the option to remove chromatic aberration. This is also something I talked about in my last tutorial. Chromatic aberration is going to basically be when you're looking at your subject here, sometimes there is going to be like little color defects, especially around the edges of objects. In this case, we don't really have chromatic aberrations, but it basically happens when there's some sort of light refraction happening on your image and it's causing these imperfections in your image, especially in the color. So it's an easy fix inside of Lightroom. You just check this remove chromatic aberration option inside of Darktable. We're going to come over here to the correction group and we're going to come down here to chromatic aberrations. So all you have to do, it's kind of like Lightroom, is you just turn it on. So in this case, I just click the on button here and that's going to remove chromatic aberrations. So I'll add that to favorites. And below the chromatic aberration option is going to be enable lens corrections. So I'll come back over to dark table and I'll come over here to the correction group again. And I'll just scroll down here and you'll see we have the lens correction option. I already have this turned on and you can see here that dark table does recognize what lens you used and what camera you used. So if I turn this off, here's what it looked like without the lens correction and I turn it on. Now you can see that the image has been corrected based on how much the lens is going to warp, mainly the outside of the image here. The reason of course is that lenses are curved. So usually what happens is your image gets a little bit curved and if it curves too much, it can sort of have that fisheye look to it. Most of the time you won't really notice until you turn that lens correction on and then you can see really how much that image was being bent by the lens itself. So we're gonna add this to our favorites. And actually I lied, there is one more feature I wanna cover. So if I come over here to Lightroom, Underneath defringe is going to be the geometry option. And this basically allows you to correct the perspective of an image. So if I hover over uh, one of these tools here, you'll see Lightroom is gonna demonstrate what it does to correct the perspective. So inside of Darktable, there is a feature and it is inside the correction group here. And I'll just scroll down and it's going to be called perspective correction. So this is going to perform basically the same thing. Obviously the settings are gonna be a little bit different, but this will allow you to change or correct the perspective that you captured originally inside your image. So let's add this to our favorites. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm just going to collapse the local contrast. So here you can see now inside of our favorite section, we have all of the different tools that are found in Lightroom. So if you're a Lightroom user switching over to Darktable, this should make your workflow a lot easier. The only difference or the main difference I should say is that these are gonna be in a slightly different order than what you're used to inside of Lightroom because as I mentioned multiple times in this tutorial, Darktable has a specific order for doing things in order to get the best final output. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified every time I have a new tutorial. And you could check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.